A couple of things uh, I just want to say, wow. Um, a, Leslie and Rebecca can sing. I mean, that was, that was awesome. Thank you so much for putting that together uh, and blessing us with, uh, with those offerings this morning. And I also want to say, wow, God is so good. And I, I love when, uh, when I have unexpected, and I don't know why they're unexpected because, you know, I should expect them. But when I have God just reinforce what, uh, what we're going to talk about this morning. Eric and I did not plan our, uh, you know, we didn't coordinate anything. I guess we probably ought to, but I mean, when the Holy Spirit is working and, and directing, um, you know, maybe our plans would just get in the way. But, but Eric talked directly about what, um, in, in his communion meditation, what I want to, uh, what I want to offer you this morning. Uh, his communi- his uh, um, meditation this morning came out of Galatians chapter 6. I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 5 and look at Galatians 5 and verse 1. Uh, and that's going to be our text. Uh, I'm going to read that here in just a second. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I preached a sermon and I talked about freedom. And, and so I said, hey, we're going we're gonna to get into this idea of freedom. We're going to talk about freedom uh, a, a little bit here as we, you know, suffer through and muddle through this, uh, you know, this quarantine, this, this lockdown. And, and I got a lot of emails about that. I got a lot of Facebook um, uh, messages and, and uh, you know, a lot of them were, you know, they're, they're kind of, they were half and half. Some of them were like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this. I, I need this. I, I struggle with, uh, you know, with, with feeling bound in my relationship with God and, and feeling fearful. Um, and then uh, I, the rest of them were like, oh, I'm so excited about this uh, because, you know, I've been studying with somebody or I know someone or there's someone in my family who struggles with this mightily. And, uh, and so uh, I, I want to talk about this idea of freedom. We are obsessed with freedom right now. I mean, we're typically obsessed with freedom as Americans, but specifically right now, we are consumed with freedom. Uh, you know, I am free to leave my house. You can't keep me locked up. I, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm free. This is a free country. And, uh, you know, you, you can't keep my business closed. This is not fair. We're free to do this and we're free to do that. And, uh, you know, freedom uh, is, is a big topic right now. This virus has brought into question uh, and a, a lot of things. It's brought into question a lot of, uh, of, of issues, and it, and it has exposed even more things. Uh, you know, this, um, you know, it really kind of drives home what's important. It really kind of drives home the kind of people that we are when, when something so drastic happens. Um, you know, I'm... I am convinced that that who we are as a, as people, our character is is revealed more through through hardship and, and and depression and and you know through obstacles than it ever is in times of uh, of plenty or in good times. Um, you know, I, I believe this with all of my heart that that character is not created or you know we say oh this builds character. Character is rarely built. Character is always revealed. Um, and it's revealed in, in, in times like this. We find out a lot about ourselves. Um, and, and so with this idea of this quarantine, this lockdown, and, and even with it being lifted and, and these restrictions being you know, modified and all that, people have a lot of opinions about it. And, and I'm not going to take an opinion one way or the other because I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I have medical professionals in my family, my wife, my daughter, um, and I talk to them and they'll tell you, I don't know what to do. Uh, you know, the numbers say this, the numbers say that, the risk is this, the risk is that. So I don't know that anybody really has a, 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 a just an absolute uh, headlock on the, you, you know, on the situation. But I know that how we respond to it, right, wrong, or indifferent, how we respond to it, whether, whether the, all the numbers are right, whether they're inflated, whether the CDC knows what they're doing, whether, you know, China lied and, and uh, you know, whatever, what, what all, what, no matter any of those circumstances, how we respond, what we do says a lot about us. So that brings into question, what, what, is, what does it mean to be free? What, what is freedom all about? 
you know, you think about, um, you know, why we are free. And, and what does that do for us? I believe that that's summed up in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. That verse says, now Galatians 5 comes right after 1, 2, 3, and 4. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. <clears throat> Say that to yourselves over and over again. It is for freedom, for the sake of freedom that we have been set free. It isn't so that we can do anything other than be free. We have to understand that as a concept before the, the reality of freedom becomes real or even useful. You see, that's the, that's the idea that I want to get across today is the usefulness of our freedom. It isn't for your sake. It isn't for the sake of the world. It isn't for the sake of, of this or that. It's for the sake of freedom. You have been set free. See, freedom is not useful until we understand why we are free. You see, the... the the reality is, is that most of what we do as people is because of fear. Why do we buy so much toilet paper? Well, we're afraid we're going to run out. Why do we stockpile this? Because we're afraid we're not going to have. Why do we do, why do we, uh, you know, why do we do all the things that we do? Why do we save for a rainy day? Well, we don't want to get wet. Why do we, you know, why do we pack our 401ks and our savings and all of that for, you know, for, with more money than we will ever spend in a lifetime? Well, I, I'm a, I'm, I want to set my children, my grandchildren. Well, we're afraid that they won't. We're, most of what we do, I am afraid, is fueled by fear. And what does Jesus say about fear? Do not. Be afraid. The most, I've said this over and over, I'd like to do a, 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 a research a project. I don't want to do it. I would like someone else to do it. I, I hate listening to myself. Is to go back through all of my sermons I've preached over the last year and a half and how many times I've brought this one point up. And it would be a lot. The most commanded thing in all of Scripture, do not be afraid in some way, shape, or form. Fear not, for it is I. Do not be afraid. Uh, you know, do not fear this, do not, do not be afraid. The most commanded thing in all of scripture, because fear is our biggest problem. And for the sake of freedom, it is that Christ has set you free, it is that freedom cancels fear. Freedom doesn't eliminate fear, but it cancels fear because acting in fear leads to bad things. Now, I'd already mentioned that, that Galatians 5 comes on the heels of Galatians 1, 2, 3, and 4. I, I mean, it takes a Bible scholar to, to bring out that point. You're welcome. Uh, but, and so what is, and, and I believe that Paul is leading up to this point because Galatians is all about living under the, the freeing grace of God. He, he starts the, the letter out. He says, grace and peace to you. And, and he goes right into why in the world have you got, I mean, like, it's like verse four of the, he goes through the intro, you know, good to see you, yada, yada, yada. By the way, why are so many of you guys falling back into this trap? Why are you falling back into the trap of the law and, and, and circumcision and all those things? So he goes through all of that and he talks about this, the, you know, the grace of God, the salvation of God through, uh, through Christ is exactly what, what Eric was talking about. It's not, uh, you know, anything that's not Christ and it's Christ only. And Paul is driving this point home. He even brings Peter into the mix. He's saying, look, smart guys can get it wrong. Biblical characters can, can kind of get their eyes on the wrong thing. Thing. He says Peter was not acting correctly. He was, you know, he would eat with Gentiles, but then when certain Jews came into town, he's like, oh, no, we can't do that because, you know, there was a, you know, there was a way that things were done and there was convention involved and all of that. And, and, and he goes through all of these issues about falling back into, uh, the, you know, the sin of, uh, of the law and how the law doesn't save and all this other stuff. And then he finally gets to this point. He says, look, it's Christ has set you free. 
You are free from, from the fear of not being accepted by God. You are free from the fear of, uh, of not being enough. You are free from the fear of, of not being clean enough. Free from the fear of not being good enough. You are free from the fear of, of all of those things that would separate you from God. You can stop worrying. Now, there's things to be afraid of, but we don't have to be. It doesn't take away the fearful situations. But it can cancel the fear. Because acting in fear, like I said, leads to bad things. Because, because fear is, is simply prohibitive. I mean, most of the time, fear prohibits. Now, there are actions that we take... Uh, you know, because of fear, like I said, you know, stockpiling toilet paper um, and, and those things. But you know what fear prohibits? Generosity. See, me stockpiling eliminates generosity for others. So fear is prohibitive. Fear is all about don't do something. And if we're focused on all the things that we don't do, then not a whole lot of good is happening. Because we're so, we're so worried about what we don't do. It's like, you know, the, um, one of my favorite things to do in all, of the, uh, in all of the world is ride my bike. I love riding my bike. Um, I did, uh, I did a, a real light ride yesterday. It only went 22 miles. Day before that, I went 40. It was great. I've been tearing up the Katy Trail. I love it. Now, one thing um, that the Katy Trail offers is a lot of challenges. We just came through one of the big challenges, which was, you know, major pollen season. Um, and so, you know, your nose is stuffy and all that, and it, but you, you, you press through that. Well, now the critters are coming out. And one of, the, one of the, my most favorite critters on the trail are snakes. And I say that facetiously because, you know, the, you see snakes and people are like, oh, what kind of snake is that? Oh, that, that's a snake. It's bad. It's terrible. Well, is it poisonous? Well, of course it's poisonous. <clears throat> it's a snake. They all are. You just, you know, if you think they all are, just get away from them. Well, yesterday I saw a copperhead about that long. Get, am, am I hands in the frame? Yeah, about that long. Well, I mean, come on. It was, it was really long. It was gigantic. It was the most giant, biggest copperhead you've ever seen. You know, it was laying right there in the middle of the trail. Well, I stopped to take a picture of it. Um, because I thought, oh, that's so super cool. And I got a dis you know, I social distance from the copperhead and I took a picture of it and I wanted to show my wife, this beautiful copperhead and her, and I showed it to her and her first words were, well, can't ride on the Katy trail anymore. Fear is prohibitive. I mean, even when we know there's nothing to be afraid of, uh, you know, have you ever seen a kid on the edge of a pool? Jumping in, I mean, we used to have a pool in Tennessee in our backyard, and I've, I've, I've stood countless hours up to my waist in the shallow end, talk, saying to Hillary, saying to Hyatt, as they're, you know, whatever kid, you know, jump, jump to daddy, jump to daddy, you know, and you got the little, you know, little swim diapered kid, and, uh, and I mean, they'll start crying on the edge of the pool, and they won't jump in because they're afraid, even though they know dad's there, dad, they've seen brother, sister get caught, and, you know, but whatever it is, their fear prohibits them from doing whatever it is. Fear is prohibitive. And our problem is that we, we do not think highly enough of freedom. See, we, we are consumed with what we can't do as Christians. And I want to tell you this morning, Christianity, if you don't write anything else down, write this down. Christianity is not by nature prohibitive. Christianity is by nature transformative. There's a difference between you can't and you can, and it's freedom. There's a, there's a gulf in between what you can't do and what you can do, and that gulf is freedom. Our problem is, just like the, the first century uh, Christians fell back into this, we have to have guardrails. We have to have this, uh, uh, you know, this, this 
prohibition in our lives somewhere. Somewhere to tell us what we can't do. And Christ is not about what you can't do. Christ is all about telling you what you can do. What you should do. And this is how you go about doing it. First things first, you got to understand freedom. It is for the sake of freedom so that you will live free that Christ set you free. So what does that do for us? First thing, freedom produces courage. And what courage is, is it's not having no fear. You know, you, you see people in scary situations and, and, and they just act, uh, you know, they, and, and they say, oh, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You know, well, if you're not afraid in scary situations, you're not courageous. You're insane. Uh, you know, that, that's the definition of that. But, but courage is action in spite of fear. Because the fear is canceled. It isn't removed. But the effects of the fear is, is canceled. That, that's how you have a, a, an entire generation of, 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 uh, of people who are willing uh, to storm the beaches of Normandy. That's how you have uh, you know, people who are, who are willing today to go into an ICU unit and, and take care of patients with a disease that we know relatively nothing about. Uh, and, and it, you know, but every day they put themselves at risk. Not because they don't fear, but because they are free to do what they are called to do. So it produces courage. And courage is, is an amazing characteristic to have. Courage is, and it goes along with the things that we are told in Scripture. Uh, we're told by Paul, hey, you know, do you want to be more bold? Pray for boldness. We understand freedom. We can be courageous. And that makes us more bold. We're able to do things regardless of what's going on around us. So freedom cancels fear and it produces courage. Courage gives us renewed focus. And that's what I want to spend the, uh, the rest of my time on this morning in the next few minutes. It's just, what are you focused on? Because when, when we have courage... When, when fear has been canceled, not necessarily removed, but canceled, and, and, and it produces within us a, a, a courage to where now we are free to focus on what is important, not what scares us. You see, what God wants us to focus on is his kingdom rather than our condition. And that right now, it, we, we have no better opportunity to do that than we do right this minute because so often in church we're focused on here we're focused on this hour that you know that's why it's very important you know we're like i said we're habitual creatures and you know we we got to do church and we got to do church at the prescribed time that's why we start at what do we start at 10 30 uh because that's what we're used to um and you know and so you know, that's what we do. And, and we come here and church happens here and, and this is where ministry happens. And, and uh, this is where the, the focus of the O'Fallon Church of Christ is. And, and now over the last, what, six, eight, nine weeks we've been doing this, we have been challenged to focus our ministry outside of this building. And let me tell you something, it's not easy. It's not easy because we are so, uh, you know, we are habitually taught to, uh, uh, you know, based on our conditions. And here we're conditioned to do church. And it's harder to do that outside of, uh, you know, and so what we're, what we're doing right now, we have to find new ways. We have to allow God through his Holy Spirit to guide us in ways to be the church, to do ministry, to expand his kingdom outside of this. We don't have a building to invite people to. We don't have a church service to invite people to other than Hey, would you join us online? And, you know, maybe, that, maybe that's an avenue that we, can, that we can expand the kingdom through. Maybe that's a, uh, you know, maybe that's a way that we can, um, you know, that we can grow our footprint in this community. Either way, we're not focused on the conditions. We're not, we're not woe is me, we can't do the things that we want to do because of this situation. 
Well, we can still be Christ. We can still be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, you know, I, I hear all the time that, well, you know, as far as the, our, uh, our culture is becoming less and less, uh, you know, Christian. You know, we've taken, we've taken prayer out of the schools. We've taken God out of this. We've taken God. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. You're free to pray anywhere you want. You're free to share the gospel anywhere you want. Now, the circumstances, uh, the, uh, the conditions uh, uh, you know, regarding those actions, those aren't going to be removed, but we don't have to be afraid of them. We don't have to be afraid of them because we're free. So courage gives us a, a renewed focus, focus on the kingdom, not our conditions. And we're to focus on our, the kingdom rather than convention you see we like i said we do things because that's how they've always been done well the 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 thing that we've learned over the last however many weeks is that when it comes right down to it convention doesn't matter the way we've always done something doesn't really matter because this very avenue of of worship of preaching of gathering i mean it, it's never really been done and up until eight nine weeks ago we would have thought oh no we you know we've got to meet here well you know what freedom has taught us we can do this we can do it this way we can be effective this way the the conventional way of being a christian being a a, a go to church and and do it this way and all all those things are out the window and we are free to act like um a carpenter in a robe and sandals wandering the Gal the galilean countryside once again we can do it just like jesus because convention is out the window and we are free. We are free to do that. We are free to follow Christ. We're free to, to, uh, to go talk to anybody we want to. Isn't that what Jesus taught us in John chapter 4? When he went to the woman at the well and, and he spoke to her and he communed with her and, and he talked to her and he taught her? Isn't that what Jesus did in, in so many other chapters of the Bible when he went to Zacchaeus' house? When he, when he sat, when he allowed uh, uh, the, the woman to, to bathe his feet in her tears and to dry it with her hair? When, uh, you know, when he allowed uh, you know, sinners and tax collectors to be around him isn't that what jesus did he flaunted the conventional wisdom and all of the politics of the day and we can too because we're free because we're free we're not we're not free to be enslaved by new conventions we're not free to be enslaved by modern conditions we're not freed to be slaved by our particular brand or understanding of this or that doctrine. We are free for the sake of freedom. And that's not prohibitive. That is an action-oriented freedom. Now, there's, uh, there's a couple of kinds of people listening to me right now. Well, there's three kinds. There's, uh, the first are the elders, and they're just like, oh my goodness. The other ones, there's, there's, then there's other two. There's some members that are watching this and they're pumped. They're, yes, that's exactly, that's what, that's what the Bible's telling me. That's what Jesus is telling me. That's what Paul is telling me. That's what Peter learned in his dreams. That, yes, yes. And then there's those who are like, where's he going with this? Where's he going with this? What, what's he trying to do? I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says. I'm just trying to tell you, God has come to us and said, don't be afraid. Stop worrying. Stop, stop not doing all of the things that you think you're not supposed to do. Now, I'm not saying take up those things. I'm saying focus on what we are to do. Wake up in the morning. Ask God, what do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to be generous to? Who do you want me to bless? Who do you want me to pray for? Who needs a song today? 
You know, our sing, we shouldn't be so worried about how and why and all this we sing on Sunday. We should be worried about who's getting a psalm or a hymn or a spiritual song from me on this glorious Thursday morning. Who, who God, do you want me to touch? Who, who is going to uh, experience the Holy Spirit through the overflow of my life today, God? What do you want me to do? We need to think more highly of freedom. Well, you're in luck because the sermon is yours this morning, uh, and all the and my kids always tell me that they're they're waiting for me to say and join us as we stand and sing because habitually that's what I say at the end of sermons. Well, I'm not going to say that this morning, but I am going to say this: I want you to go into all the world and live as free men and women today, free to share the gospel, free to live the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus lived and he died and he rose again so that we may live with God forever and ever. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.